All right, today I'm gonna show you how to resurface a head at home with sandpaper. Right here we got 80 grit sandpaper. Then I'm gonna switch it over to 100 and then 120. First, let me show you how much out of warpage this is. The cylinder head is four thousandths of an inch out of warpage. You see right there? You can see light. That is a serious gap right there. You should never ever have a cylinder head this warp. So let me slide that one under. That's the four. I'm not even gonna go to the two. This is beyond two. All right. Slides right under. Barely though. So that means this is four thousandths of an inch. Okay. Right there. All right. Normally you check the cylinder head like this. Diagonal. Both sides. We're slipping under. Then you check like that, that, there, there, there. Those are all the points where you check the heads. So we know this head is four thousandths of an inch warped. Let me show you how to fix that at home. You don't need a machine shop for this. Some of you are going to like it, and some of you are going to hate on this. This is what I do. Watch and learn, all right? And it works. Okay. I'm pushing on the one by that way. Then I'm gonna get it in there. This here is 80 grit sandpaper. I glued this to the particle board. First, I sanded this particle board flat, perfectly flat, so that so that we can have a true flat surface there. See that there? Check that, just like the cylinder head. Same deal. Like that, like that. And this is a precision ruler. So this thing's straight. All right, so now, put this on top of here. First, I know, probably tripping out. I got the spark plugs in there to show you. See how much we got left. We got that much left. So we got to try to stay above that. All right, so here we go. I got these overlapping the sides so it doesn't catch on any other metal. All right, here we go. Keep in mind, I'm starting with 80, but I'm not gonna end with 80. Let me show you the low spots. Check it out. Now you see where our low spots are? All right there. So we need to sand this down until we get all these low spots out of there. All right? So let's do it. These, okay, let me show you something. These are the maximum amount that you can sand this, resurface this head down. All right, so keep in mind, we got plenty left here. See that? There's plenty left. So let's keep going. Notice I got this one set further in than this one. So this is my grip to pull, this is the push. Every once in a while, dust it off. Go at it again. I'm just putting this here to keep it from moving. of an inch. What I'm looking at is this here and this right here. We're already getting a change here. See, the four still fits barely. Nothing here, no gappage. There should be no gappage there, nothing. 
you can just look at it and tell. Run it right here, real slow. You can just look at it and tell there's no gap. All that right there. No gapage at all. Not even a two thousandths of an inch is gonna fit in there. Only here, this is the low spot. The low spot is right here in the center where the cylinders meet. This is the weakest spot on your cylinder head. This, these areas right here, are usually where cracks occur. It's very common for the cylinder heads to blow out right here in between each cylinder. All right, we're still, we still got gapage. I can actually throw a graphite head gasket on this and seal that up like that, but I'm not. I'm gonna use a multi-layer steel gasket, MLS, and I'm gonna uh, get this all the way down so we can't even put the 2,000 of an inch uh, filler gauge in there, all right? Let's keep going. Okay, here it is. We are about 25 minutes into this. I'm keeping track of the time so that you guys can see what kind of effort this takes. All right, as you can see, we're getting better. Getting closer, we still have these low spots here in the center, which is normal. It's always normal for these to be low here. All right, that's where most of the warpage occurs all the time, right here in the center. So anyways, we're almost done. This is just a rough surface, and I'm gonna finish it off with a not so rough sandpaper. Started with the 80, we're gonna end with the 120. So from 80 to 100 to 120. Almost there. A little bit more to go. Okay, we got the four thousandths of an inch here. Let's check it. Centers. We're hitting, that's perfect. That's what you want. That's exactly what you want. Good to go. Switch it over to three thousandths. Right here. Three thousandths of an inch. Okay. Barely squeezing under. That one's going under pretty easy. Oh, well, kinda. We're hitting there. Hitting there. Three thousandths of an inch right here. We're good to go. <clears throat> you know two thousandths is gonna slip under. So, so let's do it anyway. Alright? It won't hit it won't slip under on the edges because those are the most flat. Now here, it'll slip under. But I can feel it barely wanting to, I can feel it kind of snuggish. All right? So we're getting there, we're making progress. So far that's like 40 minutes into it. Okay, almost there. This part's kind of deep right here. It's like the fire ring on the head gasket. Really put an indentation in there, but so what? We'll get it. Just keep going at it. I'm pushing down flat with my hand just to distribute the weight. Okay, we got a nice flat, but we're not done yet. We got this score mark from the fire ring. That thing's pretty deep, but it's not deeper than this. All right, so we still got plenty, plenty of uh, material we can cut off. All right, we're still good to go. So. A little bit more and we're done. Is it worth it? Yes. To save 45 bucks? Definitely. So one hour, do you make that, do you make that much on your job? 45 bucks an hour? Hmm. If you do, then you're all good. You can just go pay for this. But here's a cheaper way to do it. The next step is to get this smoother. We're getting flatter. We still got this small area. But now we gotta smooth out all the low spots. All right? Okay, here we got a, a glass. We got a glass here. This is, show them the edge. We got a glass here. This is about 5 sixteenths of an inch. And this board here, this is about an inch and a, a quarter. Something like that. Anyways, I got this thick board so that we don't get any deflection when we're sanding the cylinder head, all right? And um, I've already checked it for straightness, and it is right on the money. It's good to go. I know this isn't a long enough straight edge to check the whole deal, but I got this fishing string here. Just so I can check the straightness of it. All right? And that is pretty straight right there. That is good to go. It's a hair off, but it's nothing serious. It's good to go. That right there is good enough to sand. 
Of course, a piece of steel would be better, but I didn't have access to a piece of steel. I got this glass off of Craigslist for free. Some guy was giving away some glass and I happened to go pick this one up. And I found this board down the street at the YMCA. Then we went and picked up some sandpaper. This here is 100 grit. So I glued this with adhesive and I glued the one on the bottom. The one on the bottom is 120. This is 100 grit. All right, so after the 80 grit, after we hit this with the 80 grit, this is with the 80 grit. Now we're gonna sand it with the 100 grit. This time we're gonna move the cylinder head on the sandpaper. This is all solid. We have no deflection at all. All right, this is glued down, slide. I actually got this idea from a guy on YouTube. He goes, his YouTube name is Bobalize Four. I don't think that's him, but it's probably his daughter's page. But good idea, man, and it works. I've already done it on another head. Now I'm doing it on this one. Works very good. See the material is taken off? Now this is what you do. Hit this like this. Get all that off. Get this off, this is the aluminum. It's coming off the cylinder head. Okay. We got this right here. This is from the fire ring. The hardest part to get rid of. All right, we're almost there. Let me show you the difference. Okay, almost there. You see this spot here? I don't know if you can see that. This is a low spot right here. It covers the entire area right here, which is low. Okay, look here now. Remember how that was a low spot, all that? Now we're starting to dig into it. <clears throat> now it's starting to get at the same flatness as this side and this side. It's catching up because we're taking more material off. And we're still good on the wear indicators. See that? We're still good to go. What I'm looking at is for light. I'm seeing if I can see any light beaming from the back. That's a good way to tell also if you got gappage. But you always must use a filler gauge. So now I got the three thousandths of an inch. This is three, all right? Look at that. So we know the three is not going under anymore. Okay, we went from four. Remember, this was this was uh, out of warpage, uh, four thousandths of an inch. Now let's go to two. That's two thousandths of an inch. So here's the two. Starting here. Slightly sliding under. Ah, barely. Not even. Look at that. We're hitting there. That's what you want. That's beautiful. Now this side. We can actually, we're good right here. Now let's sand. Sand it until we get that out. Once we get that out, and the rest of the low spots, done deal. All right. Get that back down there. All together, this job took about an hour and 15 minutes. About that. Total. Is it worth it? You better believe it. Say 45 bucks, 50 bucks, oh yeah, better believe it. I'll do this all day, man. Yeah, I know it's not a professional job at a machine shop, but it's all right, man. You do what you gotta do. If you're broke, man, and you can't afford this, that's what you do, man. Go pick up the sandpaper at Home Depot. This is it right here, the 3M grade. 120, 100, and 80 grit. You start with the 80 grit in order to grind off as much as possible, fast, all right? Because if you start, if you use only the 120, which is what we're gonna finish it with, then you're gonna sit here and grind for hours, man, all right? This cuts down time. 
The 80 grit cuts down your time. So now that's it. You can't see any light beaming through. Show this part. That's exactly how you want it. That's done deal right there. All right. This is the two thousandths of an inch filler gauge. And I'm checking it. This is the end result of me using sandpaper. Look at that. That's exactly how you want it. You want it to hit like that. That's a done deal, man. Check the center. That's a wrap. That's what you want right there. Done deal. What you do is this. Put the fishing string right on the corner. Line it up like that. And you check it for straightness. See how I'm moving it in and out? Back up a little. My hand is stationary right here on the corner on the side of it. All right? I'm on the side of it. Now I'm moving it in and out to look for the straightness. And that is straight. Right there. And that's how you check for true straightness on your ruler. In case you're wondering what kind of glue I used, this is it right here. Made by 3M. Good stuff, man. This stuff is, that's what's on the bottom of this. Look, it hasn't even come up yet. So, good stuff right there, man. So we're all good here. All right. Everything is flat on this. That's a done deal. That's all good right there. That's exactly how you want it. Pure flatness. Okay. This is done. I can either put it on the, the engine now, but I'm going to hit it with the 120 one more time. All right. But I'm not going to show it because I'm done. That's it. I'm done recording. Because um, I want to hurry up and finish this car. But <clears throat> I'm putting this car together. <clears throat> but I'm doing a head gasket on this vehicle. And this is a 99 Mazda 626. 2.5 liter V6. 24 valve engine. Uh, I'm putting that together and I'll show you that later. I'm, doing, I'm recording the whole process on this car. Alright? So you'll see this working in the vehicle once I put it all together. But for now, that's it, man. Don't ever give up, man. Don't ever say the task is too great. Never, ever, ever say you can't do something, man. That you can't accomplish something. Especially with haters, man. There's always gonna be people hating on you, man. No matter what you do. Whether you're sitting still or whether you make the moves. There's always gonna be people hating on you, man. Don't sweat that, though, man. Not a big deal. You just keep moving forward, man. Don't let anybody intimidate you or discourage you, all right? You keep it strong out there, man. This is a lot of work. It took about an hour and uh, 15 to 20 minutes to sand this. Is it worth it? Better believe it, man. I really believe it's worth it. Because you get to do it at home, man. And there's a sense of pride in doing something like this, you know? When you're doing stuff like this, man, it, it, you feel good about it. You know, especially if you love this stuff. You know, it's not a big deal for me, man. I love this stuff, man. I could do this all day, man. But anyways, that's what you do. That's how you get down, man. And then this surface is true. This is a true flat surface. Anyway, man, put Jesus Christ first. Like I always say, man, he died on the cross for your sins, man. And don't play games. This is serious business, man. God ain't joking, man. You live a life of sin, man. You smoking weed, getting drunk all the time, got getting high all the time, doing crystal, doing cocaine, you know, whatever, man. Messing around with pornography. God didn't design you to live a life like that, man. He didn't design you. His plan for you was not for you to be living a destructive life, man. He came, first of all, he made you. But like the Bible says, all have gone astray. But in order for you to get saved, man, you gotta call on the Lord Jesus Christ, man. And you gotta repent, but you gotta mean it from the heart and be sincere. So don't play games with your soul. That's why I always say put Jesus Christ first. Of course it's hard, man. Nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. But man, I'll put it down, man. I try my best to fight. And I'm gonna stay as strong as I possibly can. That's why I call on the Lord all the time. Even before I do a card, man. I always call on the Lord, man. I always take it to prayer. Any car I do, I take it straight to prayer. You know, and then most of the times 
No, all the times, man. God never fails, man. Never. So put Jesus Christ first, man. Don't ever forget that. With God, all things are possible. In Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Put Christ first. Keep on smashing on it, man. Don't ever give up. Go get it.